Hey, it's Steven from MyPLCTraining.com, and I got a quick video for you on tag aliasing in Studio 5000 Logics Designer or RS Logics 5000. So, tag aliasing is uh, very simple to learn, but can be confusing for some people when you're getting started. So, we're going to talk about how to use aliasing to address physical inputs and outputs to tags in your Studio 5000 project. And before we get into this, I've got to ask if you've gotten my free cheat sheet yet. Um, it's called the three things you need to know to understand any PLC system. And uh, you can find the link below in the description if you'd like me to send that to you, to your email. It's short and sweet, but I put a lot of thought into it because nailing down these three concepts, which are inputs, outputs, and logic, so there's a little spoiler, nailing down those concepts will really help you become a competent PLC programmer much quicker. Okay, so now back to our training about tag aliasing. So, here we are in our Studio 5000 project that I've created, a uh, blank project here, called it tag aliasing pretty sure I spelled aliasing wrong so ali aliasing there we go so we're in this project and it's blank we're gonna start from scratch let's go ahead uh, we've got an emulate controller here you could have any controller but we just got the emulate here uh, let's go ahead and add a couple IO modules so First, let's do a discrete input module. And this will need to be a control logics type module since we're using the emulator controller. And my favorite is the IB16, which is a basically a 24 volt DC 16 point input. So let's grab that, just double click it. Major revision three is fine. And I'm gonna leave the name blank. We don't care what the name is. Okay, good. Now let's add a analog output module. So OF8 is a good choice. Uh, simple and pretty inexpensive analog output module uh, for control logics. Okay, so we've got our IO modules added. Now I'm going to open up the OF8 properties again forgot to do this and we're gonna set up the configuration for this so our options are negative 10 to 10 volts or 0 milliamps to 20 milliamps output signal uh, so for the sake of simplicity we're gonna use a 0 to 20 milliamp signal and basically we're gonna set up the scaling so that 0 to 100 percent in our tag that we use in our project is going to correspond to 0 to 20 milliamps. So if we uh, write 100 to our tag, our output tag, then it's going to put a 20 milliamp signal on the output module channel. So that's how that works. Click OK. And uh, let's say that the, the program we're going to try to create here is very simple, but we want our 0 to 20 milliamp signal controlling a valve for a mixing tank system. So this valve uh, can open to allow the solution to flow into the tank to be mixed. So you open and close the valve to allow solution to, to flow into the tank and then the tank mixes it up, etc. So we can control the speed of the solution flowing into the tank by adjusting this variable valve. So the valve is adjustable from 0 to 100 percent, 0 being totally closed, 100 percent being totally open. So let's say we want the solution to flow at two different speeds and we only want it to flow when somebody manually pushes a push button, but we want them to be able to control the speed at uh, two different speeds. So if the operator presses a button we're going to call slow fill then we'll open the valve to 45% and there will be a separate button that if he presses it will 
do a faster fill by opening the valve to 100%. Okay, so let's go ahead and create uh, two new tags for our push buttons. And so we'll go to the controller tags folder here. And we'll add new tags um, under these already created tags for our I.O. modules. So the first tag we're going to call slow fill. PB for push button, not peanut butter. And this is where the aliasing comes in. So if you select this, you can basically see all the other tags in your system and you can choose one there. So like I said, there are tags created for each input and output module. So we have discrete inputs in local one, which is our slot one module, which is an IB16. So local colon one colon i is the inputs of uh, the local chassis slot one. So we expand this and we see we have two options, fault and data. Well, as you can assume, we need data, not fault. So data will just tell us when the status of the inputs. So one more step, there's 16 inputs. So we need to choose a number between 0 and 15, including 0 or 15. And so you just hit dot, and then the particular input you want to address to. So we're going to use 0, so that will be the 0th uh, input of the IB16. OK, next tag will be the fast fill PB. And that will be similar, low colon, I colon, oh, I'm sorry, colon, one colon, I dot data. And then we'll make that number one input. OK, and you don't have to worry about the data type because when you choose your alias, it will automatically fill in the data type of the tag that you're aliasing to. So these are obviously bools because they're only on or off. All right, and our final tag will be the fill valve um, that we're opening and closing to uh, fill the tank. So we'll call this fill valve analog output, whoops, output and local. Now this is in this analog output is in slot two. So let's use slot 2 colon O dot, uh, now this is slightly different, the syntax for these. I'll just expand this so you can see. If we expand local colon 2 colon O, we have channel 0 or CH0 data, CH1 data, and so on. So we want CH0 data. Okay. And again, this will fill in whatever the data type is of this alias tag. So I hit enter, and it makes it a real. Okay, so there's our three tags. And so now we're going to create our basic logic program. So we're going to adjust the variable valve such that the solution flows at three different speeds or three different volumes. So 0%, 45%, and 100%. So slow fill will be 45%, 100% will be the fast fill, and then when neither of them is pushed, we'll set it to zero, so it's totally closed. So we'll add an XIC to three rungs here, and this will be our slow fill push button. I'm going to do a copy and paste, so control C, on that rung and then control V will paste a rung right below it. This will be the fast fill push button. And then control C, control V one more time. And this time we want it to be active when neither push button is pushed. So I copy and paste. So we got two XIOs in series. So that when neither is pushed, we pass our logic through here and activate whatever is in the output. So let's set the output of these three rungs. 
and we're going to use a move instruction also known as an MOV and we're going to move 45 into the fill valve analog output when the slow fill push button is pressed copy and paste control V we'll move 100 into the fill valve when the fast fill push button is pressed and we'll move 0 into the fill valve analog output when neither is pressed. That's how you would use aliasing to alias inputs and outputs to actual tags in your program. So, and then you got a little bonus help on setting up some basic ladder logic. So I hope that was helpful. If you want some more in-depth training on becoming a competent PLC programmer using ladder logic, aliasing, I.O., hardware stuff of PLCs, definitely recommend you start with the basics, get a good foundation. great way to do that is to check out the cheat sheet I have below on the three things you need to know to understand any PLC system. Specifically created this for motivated electricians who want to become confident PLC programmers. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.